For just £5 a month, you can get early access to all of our podcast episodes, copies of our script, access to further information, and that is just the tip of the iceberg. Head over to patreon.com forward slash Sunday Night Mystery. £5 a month. That's cheaper than 15 minutes of parking at Bristol Airport. Yeah, I know, it's crazy, isn't it? Hello, good evening, and welcome to another episode of Brad's Old Time Radio Show. Welcome to my home here in beautiful Lime Bay. It's all a bit quiet. Well, I say quiet. Quiet's probably the wrong word, because obviously, as you know, I've got an 8-year-old and a 12-year-old, and the house is definitely not quiet, and I've got a little puppy called Lola, who currently is in the studio here with me. Let me just turn around. Yeah, there she is, fast asleep on her beanbag. So... I wouldn't say that the house is necessarily quiet, but it just feels a bit different because Vic is away just for a few days in Portugal. And, uh, well, I was thinking about doing some fun stuff with the boys and we had some ideas, but the forecast isn't great. So I think we're just going to be sort of hanging around the house. I was going to be really naughty because I had considered letting William have the day off school tomorrow and George and just, uh, you know, a sneaky day off. And doing some fun stuff. But because the forecast isn't great, I'm not going to do that. So you'll be pleased to hear I'm not being naughty. We're just going to do the normal stuff. Going to take them, I think, once I pick William up from uh, school, I think we'll probably take him out for a little bite to eat. So I'm going to take the boys out and get them a, a nice meal in their tummies this evening because i've got some i've got a 30 percent off voucher for one of the local restaurants so i thought well we'll check that one out shall we give it a go see how it goes now a huge thank you for joining me once again for our regular late night visit to those dusty studio archives of all time radio shows right here at my home on the south coast of the united kingdom i'm brett i'm your host for our nighttime podcast welcome to another episode how you doing where are you listening i'd love to know if you could drop me a little message maybe oh i'm brett by the way I'm your host for our night time podcast. Welcome to... I've said that already, haven't I? I've got Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. So, what I was going to say was, I'd love to know where you listen. Are you listening in bed? Are you driving around listening? What are you doing? Let me know. Let me know where you're listening and what's going on. I've got Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. They're all called Brett's Old Time Radio Show. If you could give us a little follow and maybe a little message just to let us know what's going on, then I'd love that. I'd love to hear from you because I'm a proper nosy neighbour. So, I like to hear what's going on. Now then, uh, also we've got a brand new podcast. Don't forget, I say it's brand new, but we've been going a little while now. It's called Sunday Night Mystery. If you could check that one out, I'd really appreciate it. And if you give it a little thumbs up, a little like, that'd be great. Now then, time for another episode. Mystery and Adventure is where we're at tonight with the Tales of the Texas Rangers. This one's called Illusion, first broadcast 20th of April 1952. And I hope you enjoy it. of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Another authentic reenactment of a case transcribed from the files of the Texas Rangers. Dates and places in the following story are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Every day, Monday through Friday, there's top entertainment all day long when you set your radio dial to NBC. Listen for Double or Nothing, and you'll hear one of radio's funniest quiz shows. Yes, Walter O'Keefe consistently comes up with great comedy entertainment Monday through Friday on Double or Nothing. Listen and you'll agree. And then there's the program with a heart, Strike It Rich. The grand entertainment that Warren Hull brings you every day on Strike It Rich is just what the doctor ordered if you suffer from the housework blues. From Chicago, Tommy Bartlett brings you welcome travelers and interviews with the many interesting guests who each day pass through the Windy City. And for more fun, listen for Bob and Ray, those two zany comics. Then there's Music and Charm with Dave Garraway. So remember, every day, Monday through Friday, chase your blues away with the wonderful daytime programs on this station of the NBC Radio Network. And now, here's today's adventure with the tales of the Texas Rangers. (laughs) 
And now, from the files of the Texas Rangers, the case called Illusion. It is 3 a.m. on October 3rd, 1945. In the town of Eagle Rock, Texas, Sheriff Glenn Minton is awakened by an urgent knocking on the door of his house. He slips on a bathrobe and walks downstairs as the knocking continues. Just a minute, I'm coming. All right. Now, who is it? Amy West. I've got to talk to you, Sheriff. Please let me come in. All right, come in. Oh, Sheriff... I'm so scared. Now, now, now. Whatever it is, it can't be that bad. You don't know, Sheriff. You don't know. You can't. Here, now, you just sit down and relax. No. Please don't leave me. Sheriff, they tried it again. Tried what? They tried to kill me. Who? I don't know. Somebody. Somebody wants me dead. Now, look here, Amy. I've known you since you were a kid, and I'm going to talk to you like a father. I know what you're going to say. You think I'm imagining things. Well, it kind of looks that way. This is the third time in the past two months you've thought somebody was trying to kill you. They are. I know it. Amy, the other times we proved to you it was either accident or imagination. You'd never believe me. When the brakes went out on my car, when that man came into the house to kill me, you didn't believe it. Amy, you said that prowler was still in the house when I got there, and you know I didn't find nobody. He was there. I know he wasn't tonight. He came back. He tried to blow me up. What? I woke up and smelled gas. Before I could get out of there, there was an explosion. Where? The bathroom, I think. Part of my bedroom blew up. I don't know how I wasn't killed. Well, why didn't you phone instead of driving all the way in the here? The phone wouldn't work. Oh, it was awful. Why do they want me dead? Why? What kind of gas fixtures do you have in the bathroom? Well, there's a little stove and the hot water heater. Where's your husband, Amy? Mark's away buying calves. He'll be back in the morning. Sheriff. Somebody came in and turned the gas on. I know it. Amy, think hard now. Could you have left that gas on yourself? No. No, I couldn't. Sheriff, you've got to listen to me. Somebody is trying to kill me. Somebody wants me dead. All right, Amy. All right, now get hold of yourself. We'll go out to your house and have a look. Sheriff made a preliminary investigation at the West Ranch House, then requested assistance from the Texas Rangers. Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned and reached the ranch at 10 that morning. Mark West, Amy's husband, had arrived home in the meantime. The two officers left Mr. West downstairs with his wife and went up to investigate the scene of the explosion. Pretty much of a mess, ain't it, Jace? Uh-huh. Mrs. West was lucky, though. I've seen gas heater explosions when there wasn't a thing left of the house. What do you make of it? You figure somebody could have come in here and turned the gas on like Amy says? It could be. Yeah, heater valve was open. Yeah, but Amy could have left it open herself. You know how careless people are about things like that. Uh-huh. You say Mrs. West thinks somebody tried to kill her a couple of times before. That's right. But, Jace, to tell the truth, I don't put much stock in what she's been saying. Why not? Well, Amy's always been kind of high strung, get yourself all upset about little things. You know how women are sometimes. Is she happy with her husband? Oh, Mark's always been real good to her. Seems to be crazy about Amy and her about him. Only one thing wrong I ever knew of. What's that? Well, both of them's always wanted kids and they never had any. Last five, six years, Amy's been kind of brooding about it. What about these other times she said attempts had been made on her life? Well, the first time it was the brakes on her car. They went out and Amy smacked into a fence. She was lucky, just shook her up some. Mechanic said it could happen to any car. And the second time? She phoned me and said there was a prowler downstairs. When I got here, she swore she could still hear him walking around. I looked everywhere, and I didn't find a sign of anybody. Where was her husband? Away. He'd gone up to Dallas early that evening. You reckon he's involved in this? Oh, I don't think so. Jace, like I say, he's pretty fond of her. As far as you know, Sheriff, did Mrs. West ever try to take her own life? Well, just between us, the way Amy's been acting lately, I wouldn't put it past her. Uh -huh. We better go down and have a talk with both of them. If Amy does have ideas about suicide, Jace, how come all this talk about somebody trying to kill her? Well, the human mind's a funny thing. Sometimes that's the way it works. You mean she could have done all these things herself, and yet she really believes somebody else has been doing them? Something like that. You know, that crossed my mind when I was oh, talking with Amy. Mm -hmm. The living room door's open. Oh, yeah. What'd you find, Ranger? 
I can't say for sure, Mr. West. Might have been deliberate, and then again, it could have been an accident. It wasn't any accident. Oh, honey, you're just upset. It wasn't any accident, I tell you. He came in here just like he did the last time. Turned on the gas and tried to kill me. Honey, why would anybody want to kill you? I don't know. But he wants me dead. Amy, you've got to stop this. I don't know of a person in the world who wants you dead. Everybody loves you. That's the truth, Amy. I've never heard a soul in town speak a harsh word about you. It's no use trying to cover it up, Sheriff. Somebody wants to kill me. And when it's too late, you'll be sorry you didn't believe me. Honey, don't talk like that, please. Mrs. West, we'd like a statement from you about what happened last night. Do you mind coming in town with the sheriff and me? All right, I'll come. But I want Mark with me. I won't go unless he comes along. Sure, honey. I'll be glad to come. Sheriff, you take Mrs. West out to the car. We'll be along in a minute. Right, Jason. Come on, Amy. I don't know what to do about this, Ranger. I just don't know. Mr. West, I think your wife needs help. Would you have any objection if I took her to a psychiatrist? You know one around here? There's a Dr. Sobel who's done some work for us in the past. Works at a private hospital about 40 miles from here. I can take Mrs. West to see him if you want. Ranger, you don't know what a load it would be off my mind. I've been thinking about something like that for weeks, just haven't been able to get up enough nerve to talk about it. Probably better if the idea comes from me. I'll mention it to her on the way into town. I talked to Mrs. West. At first, she was reluctant to see the psychiatrist. But by the time we reached the sheriff's office, she'd consented. After the sheriff took her statement about the explosion, I drove Mrs. West and her husband to the hospital. While she was talking to Dr. Sobel, Mark West and I waited in the outer office. Two hours later, the doctor opened the door between the offices. Sorry I kept you waiting so long, gentlemen. Mrs. West, you can go into the other room with your husband now. How are you feeling, honey? All right. I've given your wife some capsules, Mr. West. Just a mild sedative. See that she takes one every night before she goes to bed. Sure, doctor. It won't help. It will, if you make up your mind to let it. Nothing's going to help. Somebody wants me dead. Sooner or later, he'll kill me. Well, we'll talk more about it, Mrs. West, sometime soon. Now, if you and your husband don't mind waiting, I'd like to speak to the ranger for a second. What do you think, Doctor? Well, it's only a preliminary examination. I'll want to spend much more time with her. But there doesn't seem to be any clinical psychosis present. You mean there's no definite insanity? I'm almost sure of it. What about this idea she's got that she's going to be killed? She's an extremely unstable woman, Ranger. And she's under some kind of severe emotional strain. What it is, I don't know yet. Well, the sheriff and I'd like to help her any way we can. Is there anything we can do? In a case like this, Ranger, nothing. Nothing at all. I drove Mr. and Mrs. West home and then went back to the sheriff's office. After talking to him, I decided there was nothing further I could do. I returned to headquarters. A week later, I received an urgent message from the sheriff. Mrs. West was in his office and insisted on seeing me. I went there. Sorry to bring you back, Jace, but Ms. West wouldn't talk to anybody but you. Said it was important. It's important, all right, Ranger. Real important. What is it, Mrs. West? Maybe you won't think I'm crazy now. Maybe you'll believe me. I never did think you were crazy, ma'am. Yes, you did, but you're going to see. Everything I told you was true. Just wait till I get it out of my purse. There. Look. Mm, aren't they the capsules Dr. Sobel gave you? Yes. And now I know I wasn't dreaming the past few months. My life has been in danger. Now, Amy... Well, what makes you so sure now? This. Now, you see? Inside the capsule. That's the color the powder should be. Green. But look at this capsule. Powder in that one's green, too, Amy. I... Oh, I had another capsule I wanted to show you. I thought I had it marked. Yes, Mrs. West. That's green, too. I don't know where. Oh, here it is. I knew I had it marked. See the little nick in the end? What did you want to show us, ma'am? Inside this capsule. There. The powder in this one's white. It's poison, Ranger. Well, that's something we can't say till it's been analyzed, ma'am. If you like, you I'll don't take... have to analyze it. That powder's poison. Now, look, Amy. Doc Sobel gave you those pills. You don't think he'd try to poison you? No, not him. But now I know who wants to kill me. 
I saw him. He didn't know I was watching. But I saw him take the green powder out and put the poison in. Who was this, Mrs. West? My husband. My husband's trying to kill me. In just a moment, we will continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. The cruel nature of cancer is well known. It strikes young and old, rich and poor alike. Men as well as women fall victim to this dread disease. And because anyone can develop cancer, everyone must join in the fight to conquer cancer. Every American shares in the hope that soon cancer will be conquered. But we cannot just hope for complete cancer control. We must take positive action. Do your part. Take positive action. Strike back against cancer by joining the American Cancer Society's 1952 crusade. Your dollars will help support the Society's three essential programs of research, education, and service to the cancer patient. It is estimated that 22 million Americans now living will die of cancer. Fortunately, however, this is not an unchangeable figure. By striking back together, we can reduce it substantially. So give generously to your unit of the American Cancer Society. Simply mail your contribution to Cancer Care of your local post office. And now, back to Tales of the Texas Rangers. We continue now with Tales of the Texas Rangers and our authentic story, Illusion. We had the white powder that Mrs. West had taken out of the capsule analyzed. It was poison, a lethal dose of arsenic. We took her to the ranch and began looking around in the hope of finding the source of the poison. Her husband was out on the range, and we started our search in the kitchen. Nothing in this cupboard, Jay. I'll try the one in the corner. Mm. Mrs. West, you're absolutely sure you saw your husband put the poison in that capsule? Yes. He was standing right there at the table. Oh, how could Mark do such a thing to me? Uh, you and Mr. West always get along well? Yes, till about a year ago, when he said he wanted a divorce. Naturally, I was surprised. What did you tell him? I said I wouldn't think of it. Then a few days later, he asked me to forget it. He never mentioned it again. Can you think of any reason why he wanted a divorce? I can now. Those business trips of his. Times he stayed away two or three days. Buying cattle, he said. He was with another woman. Now, you might be jumping at conclusions, you know, ma'am. No, I'm not. Why else would he have wanted a divorce? Yes. I reckon I've got what we've been looking for. Rat poison. Oh. Hmm. Bought at a Lyons drugstore in town. Just about half an ounce gone. Looks like he was scooped out with a teaspoon. You see? I told you he was trying to kill me. And now I know why. Because he's got another woman. Hey, Mrs. Me. West, did you buy this poison? Me? Oh, I've never bought anything like that. Then we'll check and see if your husband did. You... You're going back to town? Yes, ma'am. Don't leave me here. Oh, please. I'm afraid of him. I don't want to stay in this place a minute longer. He'll kill me. Take me with you, Ranger, please. All right, Mrs. West. You can wait in the sheriff's office while we go to the drugstore. <laughs> I put that poison register. Uh, yeah, here we are. Uh, any idea when this poison was bought? No, I'm afraid not. Uh, I reckon we'll just start turning pages till we come to it. Uh, west, west. <laughs> well, if that ain't luck, hit it on the third page. Yep, it was rat poison, all right. What day did he buy it? Uh, it was on June 25th. And... Did you say he? That's right. Uh, then there's some kind of mistake, Ranger. It wasn't him bought that poison. It was her. See? Amy West. Did you go to the drugstore already? Yeah, Amy. We went to the drugstore. The sheriff, is something wrong? Mrs. West, out at your house, you told us you hadn't bought any rat poison. Yes. This is the poison register from Lyons Drugstore, Mrs. West. Yes? Is that your signature? Oh. oh. Is there any chance somebody else could have signed your name? 
No. No. It's mine. I remember buying it now. I don't know how I could have forgotten. <laughs> Please, don't be angry with me. Please. We're not angry, Mrs. West. All we want to do is help you. Oh, I'm such a fool. I hate to ask you questions when you're upset, Amy. But it's important that we find out about this. <laughs> Did you really see Mark put poison in that capsule last night? Yes, I... I thought I did. I don't know now. Everything seems to be spinning around in my head. I'm not sure of anything anymore. I think that's enough for now, Sheriff. I could see it so clear. Mark standing by the kitchen table, putting that white powder. Maybe I've been imagining things... All along. Maybe I'm crazy. Oh, Ranger, please help me. <laughs> I think we better take you over to see Dr. Sobel again, ma'am. I don't care what you do. Just help me. <laughs> help me. <laughs> I called Dr. Sobel. He said he'd get a room ready for Mrs. West. While the sheriff took her to the hospital, I headed out to the ranch to see her husband. I learned he was still out in the range, so I unloaded charcoal from the trailer and started out. It was nearly five when I found him at a makeshift branding pen three miles from the house. Ooh, ooh, Charky. Ooh, ooh, boy. Mr. West? Oh, howdy, Ranger. Be right with you. Hurry up with the rest of them, Ted. Want to wind it up before sundown. Ah, what can I do for you, Ranger? I'm afraid I have some unpleasant news for you. Is it about Amy? Sheriff just took her over at the hospital. What's happened to her? Nothing serious. She's just a little bit upset. Oh, I thought it was... You were going to say something, Mr. West? I, I get so worried about her, the way she's been acting lately. I can't sleep nights thinking about it. Oh, Dr. Sobel's one of the best in Texas. If anybody can help her, he can. Sometimes I think she's better, and then... Well, it's like a curtain drop in front of her eyes. She looks at me like she's never seen me before. It's pretty awful, Ranger. Yes, it is. I'd like to go see Amy as soon as I can. Well, you'd better call Dr. Sobel first, but I don't think there'll be any objection. She take her medicine along with her? I couldn't say. I better bring it to her. She'll be needing it. Oh, I don't think you'll have to do that, Mr. West. If she needs medicine, they'll give it to her at the hospital. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I suppose you would at that. Well, I'll be along to see her tonight. On the way back to the hospital, I kept thinking about his mentioning the medicine. It bothered me and created a growing suspicion in my mind. By the time I reached the hospital, I was convinced we didn't have all the answers. The sheriff and I decided to listen to any conversation between West and his wife. We set up a hidden microphone in an empty room, and we asked the head nurse to have Mrs. West moved in there. We settled down in an adjoining room with earphones and a tape recorder. At 7.35, we heard the door in Mrs. West's room open and close. Hello, honey. Hello, Mark. Uh, you feeling better? I... I don't know. Oh, you'll be all right. Ranger said you had a real good doctor. Mark, I... Yeah, honey? I don't know. Everything is so mixed up. I sure feel Honey, sorry. Don't for her cry. Too. Oh, I'm sorry. You'll be all right. When you get out of here, we're going to have the best time we've had in the whole 12 years we've been married. You really mean that? Sure, honey. Maybe we'll go away someplace. Maybe Europe for a few months. Oh, Mark. Now, you just get a good rest so you can get out of here. Oh, we almost forgot. Mrs. Dunlap sent you some candy. You know, that chocolate fudge you're so crazy about? Here. Candy? I don't want it. Honey, you know you love this stuff. Go on. Take a piece. Jeez, Shh. Uh, What's the matter, honey? Don't you want any? You eat some. Huh? You eat some. <laughs> sure, honey. It's real good. Sure you won't have some? Oh, Mark. What's the matter? Sometimes I think I'm the... Biggest fool in the world. Oh, you're just tired, honey. Uh, Doc said I shouldn't stay too long. I'll leave the candy here by your bed just in case you get hungry later on. And I'll be in to see you tomorrow. Good night, Mark. Good night, honey. Sleep well. 
Well, what do you think, Jason? I don't know. Right at the moment, I'd say it was a toss-up. Mm-hmm. Let's get in there. Come in. Evening, ma'am. Hello, Amy. It's nice of you to come and visit me. You just missed seeing Mark. Mrs. West, have you eaten any of the candy on the table? Oh, oh Mark brought it. No, I haven't eaten any. Would you like some, Ranger? Yes, ma'am. If you don't mind, I'll take the whole box. What? I'm sorry, Mrs. West, but we want to be sure it's just candy. We submitted the box of candy for rush analysis. Forty minutes later, the results came through. One of the pieces of candy contained arsenic. We broke the news to Mrs. West. She accepted it in stony silence. We decided to let West believe his plan had succeeded. We outlined our idea to the doctor. At midnight, we had him phone West and ask him to come to the hospital as quickly as possible. When he arrived, he was kept waiting alone for nearly an hour. The sheriff and I sat in Dr. Sobel's outer office. Finally, we phoned the receptionist and told her to have West come in. You ought to really be stewing by now, Jace. Uh, that's what I'm counting on. Jace, I hold swear it. I did. Hold it, he's coming. Oh, Doc in his office? He's upstairs. Come on in, Mr. West. He told me to get down here as quick as I could. I've been waiting for an hour. What's it all about? I don't know. We got a call, too. How long have you been here? About an hour. What's happened to Amy? We don't know, Mr. West. I went down to her room. She wasn't there. Yeah, we were down there, too. Where's that doctor? I'm going to make him tell me something. Oh, Dr. Sobel's up in the lab. He said he couldn't be disturbed. Lab? What's she doing up there? The nurse said he was making some tests. On Amy? I don't know. I'm not going to stand for this. That doctor's got no right to keep me waiting like this. Not when my wife might be dead. Dead? What makes you think that? Oh, I'm sure that's it. Amy didn't want to live. She wanted to kill herself. I never got that idea about Amy, Well, you didn't know her the way I did. She was always talking about killing herself. Last night, I caught her filling those capsules the doctor gave her with rat poison. Saw her put them in her purse. You did? Yeah. Took them away from her. Reckon maybe I didn't find them all. Reckon Amy had some more. Why didn't you tell us this before? should have told you all about this, but I didn't, because I was ashamed. Now you're going to blame me. You're going to think it was my fault Amy committed suicide. Well, go ahead, say it. Mr. West, you're liable to be getting excited for nothing. Nobody said anything about your wife being dead. She is, I know it. She's not in her room, and the doc's up making some kind of test, ain't he? She's dead. She committed suicide, she's dead. Take it easy, Mark. I can't understand it. I tried to make Amy happy. Why'd she want to take her own life? We don't think she did, Mr. West. Huh? We think you tried to poison your wife with arsenic and the candy you brought her tonight. Candy? I I didn't bring her any candy. We know you did. But that's a lie. Amy died from eating poison candy. She had it with her all the time. I didn't bring it to her. I'm afraid you did, Mr. West. We've got a witness to prove it. Witness? Bring Mrs. West in, Sheriff. All right, Amy. You can come in now. What's the matter, Mark? Aren't you glad to see me? Amy, I... Maybe you can understand how I've felt all these weeks, hoping I was seeing things and knowing I wasn't. Now you know. Oh, it's all a mistake on your big mistake. No, it isn't. You wanted me dead so you could be with your other woman. Who is she, Mark? Is she pretty? Do you tell her how soft and silky her hair is? Like you used to tell me. Amy, please. Do you and she have little jokes together like we used to have? Little pet names for each other? Mrs. West, that candy you had in your room tonight, where did you get it? My husband brought it to me. Amy, that ain't true. You know you had that candy in your bag all the time. I saw you with it last night. Did you, Mark? When? You had it. Try and remember. Amy, honey, you've got to remember. Ranger, she forgets things. Her mind wanders. I never brought the candy to her. I swear I didn't. It's no good, Mr. West. We know you brought the candy. Well, you're not going to take her word. She's crazy. She'd say anything. We don't have to take her word. What are you talking about? You know what this is? Hmm? I'll tell you, Mr. West. It's a tape recorder. Tape recorder. Your wife's room was wired. You like to hear what you said to her tonight? <laughs> oh. Oh. You ready to tell us all about it now? All right. I tried to kill her. She wouldn't give me a divorce. I didn't think it feels loving somebody else can't be with her. I'll be seeing her a few hours now and then. How do you think it feels? <laughs> <laughs> 
That's right, Mark. Cry. I didn't think you knew how. Go ahead and cry. Go away, Ranger. I just... I don't want to see her. You won't, Mr. West. Her or any other woman. Come for a long time. Come on. In just a moment, we will tell you the results of the case you have just heard. Later today, you'll find more great entertainment all lined up for you on this NBC station. Next, it's The Big Show, with a star-studded guest list and your unpredictable hostess, Tallulah Bankhead. And Meredith Wilson will be on hand to direct The Big Show, Orchestra, and Chorus. And be sure to hear the hilarious Phil Harris and Alice Faye Show, featuring the comedy antics of Frankie Remley, Julius Abruzio, and Brother William. There's mirth and music with Phil and Alice and their delightful program. And remember, too, that Theater Guild on the Air will bring you another entertaining dramatization of an exciting play co-starring two of your favorite Broadway stars. Yes, Sunday is fun day on NBC because of the many fine shows sent your way to add to your listening pleasure. Later tonight, you'll want to hear Jack Parr and the $64 question as Jack asks the questions and gives away the money. So remember, for fine entertainment all the rest of the day, stay tuned to this station of the NBC Radio Network. And now, back to the Texas Rangers. And now, here are the results of the case you have just heard. Suffering from nervous strain, Amy West went to a private rest home. After six months, she was fully recovered. Mark West, having confessed to the attempted murder of his wife, was sentenced to ten years in Huntsville Penitentiary. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Joel McRae will soon be seen in San Francisco's story, a Warner Brothers release. The cast included Tony Barrett, Parley Bear, Jeanette Nolan, John Stevenson, and Byron Kane. Technical advisor was Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers. This story was transcribed and adapted by Charles E. Israel, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keach. Hal Gibney speaking. Next, enjoy 90 minutes of comedy, drama, and music on The Big Show. On NBC. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed our latest adventure with those Texas Rangers and more comedy adventure tomorrow with Dad's Army going live at 5 p.m. GMT. Now then, I've got to say a big thank you for listening. I'll be with you seven days a week, each and every week, and I'll see you tomorrow on Brett's Oldsome Radio Show. Love you. Bye. Check out our fabulous new podcast, Sunday Night Mystery. Every Sunday at 3 p.m. GMT, we delve into unsolved mysteries with gripping tales, thrilling theories, and captivating investigations. From infamous cases to lesser-known mysteries, each episode promises suspense and intrigue. Join the conversation and subscribe now on your favorite podcast platform. Sunday Night Mystery, every Sunday from 3 p.m. 